Hello there everybody and welcome back. It's Morgana here again today uh, with a tips, tricks and reviews video. Today I'm going to be testing out a pack of art sponges I recently bought uh, to see what effects we could get on a beautiful uh, simple landscape watercolour. So this is where I began. I just sketched out a really simple basic uh, landscape shape uh, roughed in some foreground and a simple uh, twiddy outline and these are the sponges in question you can see here we got a pack of six uh, the make is Crawford and Black which came from a UK uh, craft shop called The Works it's really sort of an art craft hobby sort of um, general store uh, it's very reasonable, only a pound for the pack, which at least I thought was very reasonable. You can see here they come in two colours, nice and, and squidgy. <laughs> um, very squidgy indeed. Uh, I don't think there's any difference between the colours uh, other than um, aesthetic. You know, one is not harder or softer than the other. They both uh, feel and they both um, work basically the same. Uh, so with my uh, sponges unwrapped <laughs> and my uh, paint set up, I decided to uh, to try them out. So the first thing I wanted to try out was a wet and wet uh, sky test basically. So you can see here I'm just using clean fresh water and my uh, large two inch wash brush to fully wet and soak the uh, top part of my paper. Just following roughly the, uh, the slight horizon line I've put in with my pencil. Uh, and I'm using cerulean blue to begin with. You can see I've just, uh, what I did was I just dunked the, uh, <laughs> dunked the top part of the sponge first in water, then in some paint, and I'm just dabbing it on. I want a nice sort of cloudy effect in this sky, nice little patchwork sky. You can tell uh, that my board is at a slight angle, roughly uh, I'd say maybe 30 to 45 degree angle. So you can see the paint is all running down where I've got lots of water there. Uh, but it seems to be working quite well so far. I'm pleased with uh, actually how this uh, sponge gives a lovely sort of soft and dappled effect with the wet and wet. You're not so much getting those sort of little speckly blobs that you would expect with the sponge, you know, the sort of thing you would get perhaps from a, uh, a texture watercolour brush. Uh, with the wet and wet it's all quite soddy so it's all running together quite nicely but I'm actually uh, really really fond of these sort of soft dappled marks that you can make uh, if your uh, background is wet enough uh, and I'm really enjoying as well the speed with which you can uh, get some paint to paper and get a really nice quick uh, but soft effect Uh, I've just rinsed out the sponge and picked up a little bit uh, of Payne's Grey now and you can see I'm just dabbing that on as well, not quite as liberally as I did the blue. Uh, I want the blue sky to really show through here but you'll notice I left quite a lot of white uh, which I'm going to turn into clouds just by adding these little touches of grey here and there just on the sort of underbelly and around the edges. Uh, and just turn these uh, soft white marks into a uh, drifting patchwork of clouds studding across the sky. You can see that I'm not uh, pressing hard with the sponge, I'm holding it very loosely uh, like I would a, a paintbrush and just dabbing it on very lightly. easy to get rid of the excess water just by giving it a dab and a squeeze uh, with a tissue and there you see I'm able to use it to uh, pick up any some of the excess water that's run down uh, that wet and wet sky as well and is starting to collect along the bottom. And whilst that's going to sit and uh, the water's going to continue to sort of spread and diffuse the colours softly into one another, whilst the sky is still wet, I'm using um, a round mop brush and a touch of indigo to introduce um, a distant headland. Just sweeping that colour gently across the horizon and uh, I want a nice soft edge 
the impression of that sort of top area disappearing into that sky in the distance. So you can see indigo is uh, quite a strong colour so you can see I've mixed it with quite a lot of water here to give it that lovely softness. And there we have it, my sky is done. Uh, I'm going to leave the sky to dry now and focus on the foreground. Um, that was, what, five minutes perhaps? Very impressed with the uh, sponge's wet and wet capabilities there. So now I'm just going to pop in the foreground in a slightly more traditional manner. I'm going to use again my large uh, flat wash brush, bringing in a little bit of uh, raw sienna. Uh, actually mixed up with a little bit of indigo and some sap green. Really interesting colour combination, gives you this lovely sort of murky, natural looking sort of earthy tones. Especially if you sort of pick up a little bit of each colour on your brush without fully mixing it so you get this nice almost marbled sweep uh, that you can control on the paper using the, uh, the large brush. So I'm going to leave the colour quite pale uh, along that top sort of part of the foreground where it meets the indigo. Uh, so the sort of pale colour receding into the horizon and then bringing in some darker greens, uh, darker sort of earthy colours uh, in the very front foreground in front of the tree and sort of closer to, uh, closer to us, the, uh, the viewer. You'll notice I'm uh, using the edge of my flat brush to create these sort of soft sweeping sort of diagonal, uh, curved diagonal shapes uh, in the foreground. Just sort of roughing these in here. I love doing this. This creates a really good foundation um, for a little bit of sort of shape and texture in the foreground, introducing some sort of curving, sort of soft undulating ground. Um, I'm going to pop in some long grasses later, which will turn this into a sort of grassy bank leading down to our, our tree, which is the focal point here. Now just introduce as much or as little texture as you like uh, into this sort of foreground, as much uh, or as little colour as you like. Just keep going until you're happy with it. Now I just tried the sponge out here a little bit as well. See I've dunked it in the, uh, in the green mix, the green and, um, oh, what is it, sap green and raw sienna with a touch of indigo to give it a little bit of depth. Uh, just trying it out here, giving it a little bit of uh, quick texture into the foreground. I think it works quite well around the, uh, the base of the tree to just give that impression of a little bit of scrub sort of springing up uh, around the base of the uh, around the base of our focal point there. As this is a sort of experimental um, <laughs> sponge trial, you could say, uh, you can see there that I decided I didn't like that. Um, I didn't like that little ridge of colour there, so uh, I'm just going to sweep it down. Luckily, the paint's wet enough that I can just incorporate it into the foreground without too much trouble. So if you uh, make a mistake and decide you don't like it, the nice thing about watercolour is if you're quick, uh, you can sort of uh, sweep it over with enough water, uh, just make it look like <laughs> make it look like something that you intended. Uh, all along. Just 
adding those texture lines back in there. That's going to be our nice grassy bank very soon. So now the painting has dried, I've left it to sort of dry and settle uh, so that now I can try adding in uh, some beautiful foliage on this tree, uh, again with the sponge. But you can see it's drying on uh, nice and cleanly, uh, basically I've done exactly the same thing there, I've got my paint on my palette uh, with a little bit of water on the sponge. I've mixed up sap green here with some gamboge yellow, which is a really lovely, sort of bright and vibrant yellow. Uh, it's just given that extra bit of oomph to the sap green, and it's actually uh, giving us some really lovely texture here uh, onto our tree. I'm following the pencil lines of the branches, and uh, I'm just varying basically the green and the yellow to try and get some interesting sort of colour mix. Of course, trees, when you, when you look at them, they don't all look the same colour, they're not all the same shade of green. Uh, you've got darker and lighter sort of colours. The underside of the leaf is seldom the same colour as the upper side. You've got the shadow cast by the leaves above, lots of, lots of wonderful variation and texture. Uh, and as you can see here, this is basically uh, this is wet on dry technique rather than wet on wet technique with the sponge. Uh, dabbing it onto our sky, which is nice and dry. Uh, you can see it's actually going over the sky really, really nicely. I'm taking care to leave some gaps in our tree to leave a bit of sky, a lovely little pop of cerulean blue sort of peeping through. And again, just really, really light touches with the sponge using that short, uh, short, uh, almost sort of pointed edge to get some small shapes and then dabbing them on, changing sort of the directionality of the sponge to make sure I vary the sort of placement of the... Uh, of the little textured blobs so that they all work together, it doesn't look too sort of artificial. You can see here I'm just using the corner of the sponge, uh, which I've dipped in a little bit of extra indigo to uh, give some shadow to these sort of uh, lower parts of the tree foliage. We also get this lovely, soft, loose, sort of almost feathered edge to those sponge shapes as well, where we've got the deeper, rich colour in the centre, really, of where we sort of dab the sponge. But because of the um, the sort of large hole texture of the art sponge, uh, it deliberately gives us that sort of uh, feathered edge that makes uh, this actually work <laughs> really, really beautifully for um, some some summer leaves. I think got the hint of those sort of smaller leaves that are still growing and blooming out from the tree in all directions around sort of the edges, around the top. And of course you can just sort of layer up colours as I have done here. I'm just trying out um, doing a smaller amount of texture just along the grass and on that extra little sort of stub, this little sapling that I've got growing up beside my tree. I think in retrospect uh, it would be very easy to uh, take a pair of scissors and cut the sponge down into a different shape, uh, creating a smaller surface area to uh, get those sort of little smaller little patches of texture, which I think is something I will be trying in the future. At the time I was um, <laughs> just happily daubing away and seeing what I could do with the sponge you can see you can get these nice sweeping marks as well. Uh, but I will certainly be uh, trying that out, I think. If you cut a, little, cut a little piece off and then that gives you a smaller surface area, so perhaps you can be a little more, bit more uh, delicate and dainty than, <laughs> than I'm being here. Just layering up on the left here, going to create a little bit of a uh, little bit of shrub, a little bit of scrub, just leading down to our, our focal point.
So adding a little bit of extra yellow just to brighten everything up a little bit. But the uh, gamboge yellow is very powerful, so do be careful. <laughs> So now that the tree is dry, all that sort of sponge detail that we've added on uh, is fully dry so I can go in now with a liner brush and just put in quickly uh, the tree trunk and branches. I'm using a uh, sword liner brush from Pro Art today, it's a lovely synthetic brush. Uh, it's got this wonderful shape that allows you to do these very fine lines but also carry quite a lot of paint and I'm using burnt umber today to just fill in that trunk. It's a lovely sort of warm, rich brown colour. I think it goes really, really well with, uh, well, with all the other colours that I'm using today. And just very finely, uh, with the point of the brush, just carefully following the general outline of the, uh, the shapes that I drew in in pencil that I can still faintly see peeping through the greenery that we've put in. So I'm just sort of following them with the burnt umber, uh, not too fully. I'm just so you can tell that I'm, you can see I'm leaving some gaps in the lines, uh, just where the foliage would naturally obscure the branch. You wouldn't necessarily see the entire branch um, as you are sort of looking at the tree. You'd sort of see the far path that the branch might take, but uh, parts of it would of course be obscured by the leaves. So that's the impression that I'm, I'm trying to give here. Now just beginning to put in a little bit of uh, extra fine uh, line of detail, some uh, sort of scrubby patches of grass springing up around our, the base of our tree. And now I'm just using a uh, watered down sap green mixed with a touch of the burnt umber, uh, but watered down so it's quite light. And all I'm going to do is just flick my liner brush across the paper and I'm just creating these lovely sort of diagonal leaning sort of wispy grasses following the lines that I put on earlier in the foreground. This is going to give us the illusion of a sort of a grassy bank leading down to the tree. And I'm, uh, I'm doing all my sort of grass lines leading uh, from right to left generally with a little variation obviously to, to make them look natural. Uh, just trying to give the impression that the wind is perhaps blowing in that direction uh, across our scene and uh, bending all these lovely long wild grasses uh, in, that, in that particular manner. And as I go along and do these grasses, I sort of pick up different bits of paint uh, from my palette. So it's mostly green, but when I do one pass, maybe I'll pick up a little bit of extra yellow. And then uh, that gives a little bit of extra brightness in certain sections of the grass. Or, you know, perhaps I'll pick up a little bit of extra brown to uh, deepen the colour a touch. Just whatever you do, just have fun. <laughs> Uh, I like doing that because it gives a lovely sort of natural looking variation in the tone uh, of the grass as I put it in. don't want it all to look exactly uh, the same sort of monochrome colour. You can see again here, I'm just going along, 
the lines that I've made earlier and just following the lines uh, with the little wispy grasses here just to give the impression of that grassy bank sort of flowing downwards from right to left uh, across the page. I'm just going to carry on doing that until I'm happy. You see I just popped in a few extra grasses uh, on the left side there because I thought it was looking a little barren. And now I'm just using the art sponge again quite carefully. I've dipped it in um, a little bit of light burnt umber with a touch of yellow and just daubing it on very lightly, sort of following those lines of the grass banks just to give the impression of a little bit of the root of the grass kind of sort of coming up, like pushing the soil up. Uh, but uh, there you are, we are done for today. Uh, this is our lovely painting, how it turned out. Uh, don't forget to wash your sponge out after painting the same way you would uh, your watercolour paintbrushes, just with a little uh, cold water. Um, thank you for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful, uh, instructional, uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, please let me know uh, what you felt in the comments below. Um, I certainly enjoyed using uh, the sponge, I think it's actually a really useful, versatile bit of art kit which I'm uh, going to put in my regular sort of art kit bag for, for future use. Um, so thank you, please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you're new here, I'd love to have you around, uh, visit my Patreon page if you're interested in uh, extra exclusive videos and uh, reference photos, all those sorts of goodies, uh, and I look forward to seeing everybody again in the next video.